Now I'm talking about sentence. There are some things that you must stay with. Something that you need to understand about sentence in English. A new sentence must begin with a capital letter. Huruf dalam kata pertama dalam sebuah kalimat pasti, wajib, absolutely, mutlak, fardu'ain, pasti huruf kapital. Nggak boleh setiap kalimat tidak diawali dengan huruf kapital. A sentence end with punctuation. And there are three punctuation that you need to remember about a sentence. Full stop, a question mark, or exclamation point. Full stop itu titik, question mark itu tanda tanya, exclamation itu tanda seru. Setiap kalimat pasti diakhiri oleh salah satu dari tiga tanda baca tersebut. A sentence must have verb or verb phrase. I have explained to you that every single sentence in English must have verb. If there is no verb, there must be auxiliary. Kalau nggak ada verb, pasti ada auxiliary. Is M R was word. Jadi setiap kalimat dalam bahasa Inggris pasti ada kata kerja. Kalau nggak ada kata kerja, pasti ada kata kerja bantu atau auxiliary. Verb phrase itu bisa is verb ing dan lain sebagainya. Contoh, I am writing a sentence. I subject am writing itu verb phrase karena lebih dari satu verb a sentence itu object a sentence must have subject verb object ingat subject verb saja itu klausa subject verb object itu complete meaning contoh I drink itu klausa but when I say I drink a cup of coffee I drink a cup of coffee I subject drink verb a cup of coffee object Kalau anda cuma mengatakan I drink, people never understand what you drink. A sentence must have a complete idea that stands alone. Setiap kalimat pasti punya makna atau ide lengkap. Itu mengapa dia bisa berdiri sendiri atau independent. Makanya sebuah kalimat bisa juga menjadi independent clause. Kalau anda menambahkan kalimat yang lain. Contoh. I drink a cup of coffee and my mother is sleeping. Tanpa and my mother is sleeping itu sudah menjadi kalimat lengkap. Just take a look at the example. Yesterday Noah threw a stone. Ada yellow typing. Why? In the word of yesterday itu kapital. Noah threw a stone. Noah subject threw verb a stone object. Full stop. Okay, thank you. That's what we call a sentence. Now I'm talking about the characteristic types in the English sentence. We have simple sentences, compound sentences, complex sentences, and compound complex sentences. Simple sentence. A simple sentence consists of a subject and a verb, minimally. Its status is like an independent clause. Remember, its status is like an independent clause. Every independent clause can be a sentence. Just take a look at the example to make it simple and to make you understand. I play football. The red type is subject. The blue type is verb. The yellow type is object. I play football. Subject, verb, object. She eats banana and milk. She subject. It's itu verb. Banana and milk itu noun phrase. Karena ada lebih dari satu kata. Gak masalah. Posisinya sebagai noun. Tetap ada objeknya. Noun sebagai objek. He runs quickly in the morning. He subject. Runs verb quickly. Adverb of Mena in the morning adverb of time. Setiap adverb pasti menerangkan kata kerja, menerangkan runningnya, cara berlarinya, and etc. So simple sentence is very simple. If you make it difficult, of course, for God's sake, do not make it difficult. It's very simple. Compound sentence. A compound sentence consists of at least two independent clauses. 
The independent clauses can be combined with a comma or coordinating conjunction or semicolon. Remember, compound sentence must consist of at least two independent clauses. Okay, just take a look to make it simple. I finish my homework and my and I make a daily note. I finish my homework. Full stop. It's fine. Itu kalimat lengkap. I finish my homework. Tapi kalau anda menambahkan and, berarti dia statusnya bukan sebagai kalimat tapi sebagai independent clause. And I make a daily note. Kalau misalnya tanpa I finish my homework and itu dihapus langsung aja I make a daily note titik full stop it's fine itu sudah menjadi kalimat atau independent clause. Jadi kalimat jika ditambahkan kalimat lain dan dihubungkan dengan kata sambung maka dua kalimat tersebut menjadi independent clause atau menjadi klausa tergantung itu kalimat dalam format apa. Jelas I finish my homework the red types it is independent clause. I make a daily note Independent clause. Kedua independent clause digabung dengan conjunction and. Maxwell writes a lyric, semicolon, then comma, semicolon then comma itu adalah kata hubung. He posts it on his Instagram. Maxwell writes a, li- a lyric, full stop, nggak masalah itu menjadi kalimat. Tapi kalau nggak di full stop dia menjadi independent clause. He posts it on his Instagram. He posted on his Instagram itu adalah kalimat. Tapi kalau digabungkan dengan kalimat lain menjadi independent clause kedua. Agatha loves him, comma, but she knows that she is abandoned. Agatha mencintainya tapi dia tahu bahwa dia dibuang atau disia-siakan. Ada dua independent clause di sana. Now I'm talking about complex sentence. Complex sentence consists of at least an independent clause, remember, an independent clause, satu independent clause, and at least a dependent clause. Jadi gabungan antara independent dengan dependent clause. Dependent clause cannot stand alone, of course, for fuck's sake. Dependent clause cannot stand alone. And usually it begins with who, that, which, the sequence of time, just like since, when, while, Or the casual elements just like because or if. If a sentence begin with dependent clause, give the comma after this clause. Jadi kalau dependent clause itu mendahului independent clause, beri koma di antaranya. If the sentence begins with the independent clause, do not give the comma. Jadi kalau independent clause di awal, yang sisanya nggak perlu tambahkan koma atau apapun. To make it simple, just take a look at the example. Although Anderson finish his homework, he still needs to check the list. Although yellow type, orange type, I'm sorry, itu dependent clause. Maka ada koma karena dependent clause mendahului independent clause. Independent clause-nya siapa? The blue types. He still needs to check the list. Dia masih butuh ngecek list. Titik enggak masalah. Tapi kalau Anda ingin memberi keterangan Although Anderson has finished his, op- his work, he still needs to check the list. Kalau misalnya Anda menulis Although Anderson finishes his work, titik itu nggak bisa. Karena kalau diterjemahkan, meskipun Anderson menyelesaikan tugasnya, titik orang pasti bertanya, loh, iya. Meskipun apa? Yang gitu. The snow falls because it is winter. Kalau Anda cuma menulis the snow falls full stop nggak masalah. Salju turun, titik jelas, clear enough, complete meaning. Tapi Anda ingin memberi keterangan karena itu musim salju, musim dingin. Tapi kalau Anda cuma menulis because it is winter titik tanpa apapun, nggak jelas. Karena ini musim dingin, titik, iya apa? Ada apa yang terjadi? Apa kamu patah hati atau kamu teringat kenangan? Kita nggak tahu. Jadi harus lengkap. Karena ini musim dingin, koma, salju turun. Because Jonah's heart is broken, comma, it is hard for her to move on. Jadi karena hatinya Jonah itu patah, maka sulit bagi dia untuk move on. Kalimat utamanya, main clause-nya, it is hard for her to move on, titik enggak masalah. Karena apa dia enggak uh, karena dia itu move on, 
kenapa dia move on? Karena hatinya pernah patah hati itu maksudnya. The man is sleeping, titik nggak masalah, complete, independent clause. While the other people are working, sementara orang lain bekerja. Kalau anda cuma menulis sementara orang lain bekerja, itu nggak jelas. Dari sini semoga kalian paham. Ingat perbedaan antara although, because, sama while dengan and, but dan lain sebagainya itu adalah and sama but itu conjunction kata hubung menghubungkan. Tapi kalau although, because, while itu keterangan beda keterangan dengan conjunction. Kalau keterangan dia masuk dalam klausa, tapi kalau conjunction dia cuma jembatan yang menghubungkan klausa. Now I'm talking about compound complex sentence. Compound complex sentence consists of at least two independent clauses and at least a dependent clause. Ingat minimal dua independent clause dan satu dependent clause. To make it simple, just take a look at the example. Although Tobias writes a lyric, coma, he keeps trying to arrange it and He makes it beautifully. The yellow types, it is dependent clause. Dependent clause mendahului maka diberi koma. He keeps trying to arrange it. The book types, itu adalah independent clause. And, itu adalah conjunction. Tidak termasuk kalimat. He makes it beautifully. He makes it beautifully, itu independent clause. Jadi, ada dua independent clause dan satu dependent clause. The next example. Larissa finishes her work, coma. But she needs to stay at her office. Kenapa kok pakai koma di sana? Ingat koma di sana bukan karena dependent clause mendahului, tapi karena ada kata but kontradiksi, konjungsi kontradiksi. Kalau misalnya but-nya saya ganti menjadi and, maka tanpa koma. Jadi Larissa finishes her work itu kalimat atau independent clause. She needs to stay at her office itu independent clause. Koma. Even though she has nothing to do Even though meskipun she has nothing to do Itu adalah dependent clause Kalau cuma even though she has nothing to do Tanpa apa-apa nggak bisa berdiri sendiri Maknanya nggak lengkap Kenapa kok ada tiga koma di sana? Ingat karena ada tiga klausa Maka wajib ada pemisahnya And the best part to bridge it And the best part to separate it It is koma to do it Third With a knife at hand, mother slices the carrots and she cleans up the cucumber because it was just bought from the traditional market. With knife at hand, dengan pisau di tangannya, koma, karena dependent clause itu. Mother slices the carrot, ibu mengirisi wortel, independent clause. She cleans up the cucumber, itu... Independent clause Because it was just bought from traditional market Karena itu diba- baru dibeli dari pasar tradisional Itu dependent Kenapa? Ya karena ada kata because Karena Karena itu keterangan Dan dia di awal Maka kalimatnya menjadi tidak lengkap Karena itu baru dibeli dari pasar tradisional Titik, nggak bisa Karena orang akan tanya Memang kenapa kalau baru dibeli dari pasar tradisional You need to give the information Maka harus dibersihkan Jadi seperti itu logikanya. Okay, that's all what I can say. Now I'm talking about sentence and the types based on the form. Berdasarkan bentuknya. We have declarative sentence, imperative sentence, interrogative sentence, and exclamatory sentence. Okay, to make it simple, just we have to go to declarative sentence. Declarative sentence, it is what we call as statement. It is ended with full stop mark. Jadi yang namanya declarative sentence itu bisa dikatakan sebagai statement pernyataan. Dan biasanya pernyataan itu diberi titik. Biasanya pasti diberi titik. To make it simple, just take a look at the example. I have some books. Full stop. Itu kalimat. The books are stolen by someone. Full stop itu kalimat. I have some books itu positive sentence. The books are stolen by... Someone itu passive sentence. If you want to change it into negative, I do not have some books. Pakai do not. 
Kalau negatif, dalam pasif The books are not stolen by someone Ada notnya di sana I think it's very simple to understand Imperative sentence Itu merujuk pada command Perintah, request Biasanya diberi tanda seru Exclamation mark Kalau namanya perintah Maka diawali dengan verb one Kalau nggak ada verb one-nya Maka diberi kata kerja bantu yang verb one Yaitu be Contoh Take the book Ambil buku itu Kalau negatifnya Do not atau don't take the book Kalau misalnya tanpa kata kerja Misalnya di kalimat ini tidak ada kata kerjanya Contohnya gini Cerdaslah Bahasa Inggrisnya berarti Be clever Atau Berbaik hatilah Be wise Ada kata be Be itu adalah fukuannya dari kata kerja bantu atau auxiliary This is the last part about interrogative and exclamatory Interrogative, interogasi Itu berarti mempertanyakan, question And it must be marked with a question mark Pasti ditandai dengan tanda tanya Example What do you do? Can you go away? Are you happy? The blue types itu ciri dari pertanyaan Ada 4 W, 1 H Kenapa kok who tidak dimasukkan? Karena who langsung diikuti oleh verb one Tidak usah diikuti oleh subjek Can you go away? Can auxiliary or model You subject go verb one Are you happy? Are auxiliary You subject happy non verb one Non verb one itu artinya selain kata kerja Are you happy? Apa kamu bahagia? Bahagia is not verb Bahagia itu bukan kata kerja Mengapa? Karena bahagia itu nggak perlu digerakkan Bahagia itu rasa Dan rasa itu nggak pernah bohong Dan rasa itu nggak pernah bekerja Rasa itu cuma bisa merasa Itu dalilnya Anda juga bisa mengganti itu bukan kata sifat Misalnya kata benda Are you stone? Apakah, engkau, apakah kamu batu? Ya nggak masalah kalau Anda ingin bertanya seperti itu Jadi nggak boleh Anda menulis Do you happy? Itu salah Kenapa? Karena do itu merujuk pada kata kerja setelah subjek Can you go away? What do you do? What are you doing? What are pakai R? You kemudian setelah you harus doing. Kenapa? Karena ada R di sana. Kalau what did you do? Kenapa kok pakai do? Karena did do did does itu setelah kata itu wajib verb one setelah subjek. Jelas? Exclamatory sentence. Exclamatory merujuk pada ekspresi. Kalau ekspresi pakai tanda seru. Ingat semua yang berkaitan dengan ekspresi itu berkaitan dengan emosi, berkaitan dengan rasa. I hate you. Itu exclamation in function. Jadi Anda ingin menekankan kalau Anda benci dengan dia. I hate you. Pakai tanda seru. Enggak masalah. Jadi tanda seru bisa menggantikan full stop. Kalau Anda menulis I hate you full stop dite, kesannya biasa. Aku benci kamu biasa aja. Tapi kalau I hate you Itu kayak ada emosi di sana. Jadi aku benci sama kamu kayak gitu intinya. What a beautiful goal. Jadi itu ekspresi mengagumi sesuatu. What a beautiful goal. What a beautiful goal. Di sana ada kata tanya what. Tapi ingat kalau kata tanya tidak diikuti oleh auxiliary. Tidak diikuti auxiliary seperti do, does, is, am, are. Atau model Itu berarti bukan pertanyaan Ingat semua kata tanya What, when, why, where, who Kalau tidak diikuti oleh auxiliary Is, am, are, do, does Atau model Tidak atau bukan kata tanya Atau kalimat tanya What a beautiful goal Itu bukan pertanyaan Tapi itu acara ekspresi How good is it? It is How good it is Bagusnya itu, betapa bagusnya itu Ingat how good it is, bukan how good is it Kalau how good is it, itu pertanyaan Kalau how good it is, itu eksklamasi